In continuous process, you have an addition of the limiting substrate to the bioreactor, while the culture growth, which contains cells and metabolites, is withdrawn at the same time. This keeps the biomass constant in the bioreactor and or controls the concentrations of the limiting substrate. The ultimate purpose is to increase the productivity of the process by maintaining the culture inside the bioreactor close to its maximum specific growth rate, prolonging this production state until the culture is at risk of mutation or the product is at risk of losing its efficacy. Here we have a setup with Bionet's F1 bioreactor model, a vessel of a working volume of 3 liters working together with the continuous process module, also by Bionet. This example of a process is using the chemostat strategy with a bacteria and the product of interest are both the living cells and other metabolites in the supernatant. In the chemostat, the user needs to decide the dilution rate that will be used. The dilution rate is equal to the feeding or addition rate divided by the volume in the bioreactor, as well as to the specific growth rate according to the mass balance equation. Therefore, the user will choose the dilution rate that results in the specific growth rate wanted in the log phase at the point while no substrate is being accumulated. In this particular case, this will be 0.15 per hour, which is as close as possible at the maximum growth rate of this microorganism while no accumulation of substrate is taking place. This will determine the addition flow and thereby also the withdrawal rate, which are equal. Therefore, the volume of the culture growth is kept constant, in this case, at 2.5 liters. We have that the feeding and withdrawal flow rates, in this case, are 6.25 milliliters per minute. And we will set this up from the control window of the continuous process module in Rosita software. We will first configure the addition pump at a feed of 6.25 milliliters per minute, and then the bleed pump will be set up as a slave pump to withdraw flow at the same rate as the addition pump. Continuous processing can be done in an even more sophisticated manner than the present setting by complementing this whole setting with further instrumentation, such as scales to enhance precision or advanced process analytical technologies to get real-time data and a more adjusted control. For example, if you had an optical density sensor like this one here, the addition and withdrawal pumps could be both configured to respond to the measurements of this sensor. That would be introducing the vessel through the ports and connected to the BCU following the plug and play concept. This process is called Turbidostat and can also be easily programmed with Bionet software modules. The continuous process is associated with many advantages that can be highly attractive in the context of process optimization and production prospect. The two main ones are the high productivity reach and the benefits derived from having a controlled growth composition. As you may know, Productivity is the amount of product you get per volume of the bioreactor per hour of the process. Since the volume stays constant, the effective time of production is prolonged and the reactor downtime is shortened, the productivity is higher. Secondly, through the control of growth composition, you make sure that high levels of limiting substrate are avoided, that could otherwise be associated with toxicity or catabolic repression. Growth inhibition by inhibitory compounds that may be produced during the process is also avoided. 
So far, the application of continuous processing has been limited due to the high level of deep knowledge and prior characterization of the process that are both required. At Bionet, we are working to provide the process solutions and knowledge services for overcoming these limitations and introduce continuous processing smoothly in your research or industrial equation.